to title the relationship, if I were to write a novel about the relationship that me and my grandfather possess, and title it, it would be called, I got these five you that thrown on my face. <laughs> Every Friday night, uh, my parents, my grandparents come over for, for Shabbat dinner, and at these dinners, usually, I'm, I'm greeted with the common slap on the back of the neck by my grandfather, and the common, and the common guilt trip that every Cuban grandchild has to hear. Oye, me tu nunca me llama. You never call me. When I die, you're gonna feel bad that you never call me. <laughs> At these dinners, usually politics, uh, politics, old family memories are discussed. But on this one particular night, I decided to ask my grandfather what it was like growing up in Cuba. He began with the story of how he met my grandmother. It was the day after Yom Kippur, which is a holiday where Jews must fast for one day in order to atone for their sins. And the synagogue holds a feast after this fast. And he saw my grandmother from across the hall and very confidently slipped his hair back, walked up to her and said, what's your name? And she goes, Bea. And he goes, Bea, que no be tan Bea, which means Bea, what a beautiful name. And at this moment, I had to stop him a little bit. And I was like, I asked my grandmother, Bella que nombre tan bella? That's so important. How did that ever work on you? And she goes, well, in Cuba, if a 6'4", handsome Jewish man asks you to go on a date, you don't pass that up. Uh, at, by the end of the night, I made the mistake of asking my grandfather what Cuba was like after Castro came into power. And the pendulum kind of swung a little bit, and it went from more of a romantic 1950s kind of vibe to more of a those about strife, poverty, prejudice, and sacrifices he made to keep my, my his daughter in school, and to put food on the table, and yeah. And the reveries of Cuba are still on the wrinkles on his face, the pain in his eyes, and the callus on his hands and feet. My uh, mother actually went to Cuba in the 1990s to go visit her hometown and where she was from. And my grandfather didn't speak to her for two years because he said, I worked so hard to keep her out of the country, sacrifice everything that I have, and here you are going back to the place where I tried so hard to get you out. Uh, <clears throat> so as a joke, I told my grandfather that I had a trip booked to Cuba, and he casually picked up a piece of yuca from the table, dipped it in some lancho sauce and the mother mix, and threw it at my face. And he started laughing like a hyena. <laughs> no matter what my grandfather went through, uh, the hardships that he went through, he always has a smile on his face. He keeps his, he keeps his complaints in his back pocket so no one can hear them. And he's my idol, my teacher, my role model. Moises Franco, thank you so much. <laughs>